There are a bunch of crazy and interesting theories that a lot of players have in MLB The Show. So many moving pieces in this game cause the community to have a lot of different interesting theories. So what we're going to be doing today, we're going to go and test a few things that I've heard in regards to swing timing. Not every single thing, but just a couple of things I had seen around. And we're going to go into the, the lab again, test to see what type of things we notice with swing timing and pitching and all of that. And we found some really interesting stuff as we were going here. So what happened was at first I was testing a theory about the pitcher's windups and I hadn't really noticed anything. But while I was in the software looking at these clips, I had an interesting theory come to my own head, trying to come up with a different way to see if we can tell or guess which type of pitch is coming from the pitcher. There are some rumors going through some competitive players in their chats that the pitcher actually has a different windup based on the type of pitch they're throwing. So what I basically did is I put the pitcher side by side, I put Felix Hernandez side by side here, and I tried to see if I could see any difference in his motion when trying to pitch a fastball in comparison to a slur, his fastest pitch in comparison to his slowest pitch. And looking at the side by side here, it really doesn't look any different. And I tested this a second time, we got Aaron Loop on the mound, so it was a 94 mile per hour sinker and then a 75 mile per hour slurve. So looking at the side by side, you see basically the exact same motion. Nothing, there's nothing different. It's all the same motion. And this I think makes sense. I think all of them have the same speed. All the motions do the same thing. Just cause that's what they have animated into the game. You know, are they gonna really have pitchers motions be slower if they throw certain pitches? Not shocked that isn't really the case. But while I was doing this, I noticed an interesting thing that I really wanted to look into in further detail. What if we could tell, based on when the hitter begins their stride, what pitch is actually coming into the plate? This all boils down to one setting in your hitting settings. When you're hitting, you could decide to use two different input types if you use zone hitting. You could have your input be buttons or analog. When you have your input to be analog and then you have it set to stride, what will happen here is you'll be able to control when the hitter begins their stride and then begins their swing. So you move the stick back when you want them to stride then you move it forward when you want them to swing. If you have your settings set to flick or if you have it set to buttons, the game automatically controls when the hitter begins their stride. So what likely may be happening, which is what we're gonna be testing, do hitters begin their strides automatically at different times in the pitcher's motion, or do they always at the same exact spot of the pitcher's motion begin their stride? And let's be real, if this talking real life baseball, when you're watching a pitch and you're trying to get your timing, you're probably gonna start your stride at the same time every time. Ideally, a lot of hitters start their strides at the exact same time every pitch. But since the game is doing it automatically, does that actually still happen? And that's what we're gonna go in here and test. So you got to see a little bit of the behind the scenes of what my editing software looks like right now. That was just a small part of the experiment we went through before. This is really what I looked into after doing that initial experiment of testing the pitcher's motions. Here is how the system works and how I got all this timing. First, at the bottom of the screen, you see a time code. Each one that goes up is a frame or a 60th of a second. This is the exact time it takes for each thing to happen. Zero starts whenever the strike zone disappears. So when the pitcher starts their motion, the strike zone fades out. First frame that the strike zone was completely disappeared, that is the beginning. So as you see, I go clip by clip here. Felix Hernandez is in the exact same spot Maybe his glove has moved just a little bit. Basically, he's in the exact same spot in his motion. So that's our zero. Then I put a marker down at the first frame that Mike Trout at the plate started his step. He, he slowly starts his step and you see his leg is very much not moving at all until one frame starts where it just starts to jump to the right. This frame right here, his leg just starts to move to the right a smidgen and that starts his stride. So that first frame is when the animation of the stride starts. So that's our first checkpoint. Then our second checkpoint, just to double check all of these measurements, is when the strike zone first appears after the pitch is thrown. So you throw the pitch, it gets in the zone, and then the strike zone appears with where the ball was actually located. So that's our final point. 
So we'll play all the videos just so you can take a look at what it looks like. And I'm going to go through the individual markers very quickly here. You see, I just had all these pitches by Felix Hernandez thrown right down the middle, all basically the same location. So the only factor changing here is the type of pitch and obviously the velocity of the pitch because a fastball is a little faster than a slurve. There we go. So let's take note of the timestamps of each checkpoint. The first pitch is a changeup at 87 miles per hour on Hall of Fame difficulty. Mike Trout's stride, he, he begins his step at two seconds and 15 sixtieths. So one second and 10 sixtieths of a second later. So you see one second goes up and 10 sixtieths go up. That is when the ball reaches the strike zone. So let's just take a mental note. He starts his stride now with a fastball. The next pitch, a 95 mile per hour fastball. You see that number a little different? It's actually at 11 frames instead of 15 like it was. So you see on Hall of Fame, if the difference of eight miles per hour, Mike Trout's stride actually starts four frames earlier which is really interesting. You know, he starts his motion a little earlier. Let's just look at this, 237 in this. Look at how far Trout is in his motion here. They're at different parts of their motion. Trout is a little bit further into the motion in this one because he uh, he saw the pitch a little earlier. He's ready to swing earlier, to stride start earlier. So he's further into his animation. It starts a little bit earlier. And honestly, four frames, is that really a big difference here? Probably not. So far, the theory seems to hold. Here on a 94 mile per hour fastball, it starts at 211. 211. It's a one mile per hour difference, so it makes sense how these pitches. He starts his stride, as you see his left foot, starts at basically the same exact frame point. And again, it's about one second and 10 frames. For the pitch to finish so so the length of his swing in the stride is all remaining the exact same which means like the same one second and ten frame interval is just shifting forward and backward based on what pitch is being thrown as we go through the pitches here 215 this is his slowest pitch two seconds 15 frames this is where he starts his stride. You see his left foot moves in. This is four frames slower to the 95 mile per hour four scene. And four frames may be a pretty negligible, but if you're just looking at the motion, look at Felix Hernandez, look at the slight differences in how far he is in his motion, you know? That's how late the stride starts with the slurve, but here he's just starting at his foot moving downward. So if you're looking at the pitcher, and you see that hitter's strides start a little bit later, then you can mentally know that a slurve is incoming. And this is very quick reaction time, right? These are down to frames, milliseconds. But as you see on Hall of Fame, this is a slightly significant difference. Four frames, at, that could be a pretty significant difference. Hundreds of milliseconds. And we also test this on Legend and the theory still held. On Legend difficulty at 212 is where the 90 mile per hour changeup began. At 209 is where the four seam fastball, you see these are earlier. They start to stride earlier on Legend difficulty because the pitch is coming in faster. So it's like the game knows exactly what perfect timing is as the ball is like literally on its way to the zone you know if you were able to read on this and you were able to like perfectly time each swing based on the pitch and pick up on this then you could probably pick up on a pattern you know again you see how these are overall earlier 85 mile per hour slurve on legend difficulty is about a couple frames earlier. They, they're all very close but you could tell that on legend they begin their stride even quicker. So we may actually be able to basically know now that a hitter is going to start their motion of their swing. They're going to start their stride at least a few frames earlier or later, depending on what pitch or at least the speed of the pitch that is coming into the plate. But also maybe the game knows the timing of each swing before the pitch is even thrown. And it knows that like, oh, if he's going to get a perfect, perfect, he's got to time it this way. But we need to also know if the location is actually another factor, you know. Normally, you need to be a little later in the ball on the away pitch. You need to be earlier on an inside pitch to get good timing. Is he going to start his stride earlier on an inside pitch in comparison to away? So we looked at the slurve on legend difficulty. There was a one mile per hour difference. He starts his stride at 214, so 14 frames after two seconds. On an away slurve, that is where the pitch is located. On the inside slurve, it's located here. 
he starts his stride the exact same time. And this is on the fastest pitch speed, so you would think if it's gonna be a factor, it will be on Legend. So you'll see, right now it looks like the difference between an inside and outside pitch on the Slurve, pretty minimal. Well, check the sinker now. The sinker would be the same thing on Legend difficulty, but you see, two seconds, 10 frames in, he starts his stride on an away sinker, and then here on an inside sinker, basically the same time. There is at least a somewhat difference in when a hitter starts their stride based on what pitch is being thrown, but not the location. If there's a fastball being thrown, they're gonna start their stride a little bit earlier, in comparison to a, say, slow breaking ball, which they need to usually sit back on, the game automatically sits back on it with the stride, and it's all down to your personal timing. For Felix Hernandez, who throws in the, the mid to high 80s and then the low to mid 90s, it's all within 10 miles an hour, and maybe the differences between these pitches aren't a big deal. But with pitchers like, say, Aaron Loop, Justin Verlander, Jacob deGrom maybe, who may have a larger differential in pitches, if they have like an outlier fastball and then a slow breaking ball, this difference could probably be a pretty big deal that you definitely can notice. So I did look at some extra examples. First, I checked out Justin Verlander, who has a 99 mile per hour four seam in an 82 mile per hour circle change, or at least this one was 82. Mike Trout starts his swing at one second, 54 frames on the fastball. So he's loaded up early, very prepared for the fastball. Now for the circle change, 20 mile per hour slower basically. This is actually seven frames later. Seven frames, we're getting close to 10 frames, which would be a sixth of a second. And just look at Verlander and how far he is in his motion. His leg hasn't extended basically at all here. This is when Mike Trout starts his swing. Now you look at the peak of Mike Trout's stride. He's already basically ready to swing as Verlander still has the ball in hand here. Right now, he's just starting his swing. And the peak of his swing is basically right as the ball is getting out of Verlander's hand. When you compare it to say here the peak of his stride the ball is not even past the back of his head so if you see your player loading up early like this then maybe this will be your tell that you're getting a fastball and you got to be ready for a fastball that's a pretty big difference and that's pretty noticeable and some of these pitchers have deadly combinations of pitches if you can pick up on when your hitter is swinging and they have a noticeable stride like this like mike trout trey turner and players like that, this could really be noticeable against a dominant pitcher like Verlander. Aaron Loop, who has a 94 or so mile per hour sinker and a 75 mile per hour slurve, that is even closer to a 20 mile per hour difference. So here, 51 frames in, Trout starts to swing. Here, on the slurve, it's seven frames later. So at about 20 miles an hour, it gets to about seven, eight frames after the fastball on Hall of Fame. What I actually found here, I started off looking for one thing, but we came up with some other information. A hitter changes the start of their stride of their swing based on the pitch or the speed of the pitch that is thrown. So when you're facing those big pitchers that have really fast fastballs and slow breaking balls, you know, guys like Clayton Kershaw with a slow curveball, Nolan Ryan, Justin Verlander, Pitchers like that, you could read what type of pitch you're gonna get if you're smart and notice that hitter's stride start. This may not be easy for every hitter or every pitcher, but in certain extreme scenarios, this could be something that you use to help you hit against a, a pitcher you're potentially struggling against. Just in terms of like the, the large scope of the game, this could have big implications just because, you know, the game knows before the pitch is thrown, what the swing timing should be. The stride is normally accompanied by the normal swing timing. That's why this is the way it is. I wonder if like by the time the ball is released out of the pitcher's hand, the game knows what your swing timing should be to do well, or if there's other things that are moving and constantly shifting this stuff as the pitch is thrown. It's actually really interesting. I'd love to like find out more over time. That is gonna be it. If you have any other theories and things that you would find interesting to me to research, let me know in the comment section. I do enjoy doing this and we will be doing this here and there before a new game comes out. Let me know if you have any other things you'd wanna research, your thoughts on this. Are you gonna actually use this strategy in game? Or do you think this is just gonna be a distraction or something that could take away from your hitting? So yeah, I'm gonna try to post another video tomorrow here. It probably won't be another deep dive like this, but we'll have another video out hopefully tomorrow. And I'm gonna be gone for the weekend. I'm gonna be flying down to Tampa to the Blitzball World Series with a bunch of the, the fellow content creator buds, which is super cool. So expect next week, 
a different type of video. We might just vlog the whole thing, edit it down and make it into a fun little video next week. A lot of fun content stuff inbound on the channel as we get into MLB The Show 22 and all of the news we're gonna hear. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. See you all again on the next one. Deuces.